Okay, I want to make a little video on the 1990 Toyota pickup with the 22RE here. Um, this video addresses an issue I had on the truck where I come to a signal and the idle drops. So if you're having that same problem, I want to relate how I solved it on my uh, truck here in case it might help somebody. So just a little background, uh, rebuilt the, the top end of the motor. So it's got an LC engineering head and cam. I uh, made a few modifications here and there. One of which was I did a stainless, all stainless two and a quarter inch exhaust and uh, when, I, when I welded that up, I put a, a wide band oxygen sensor in it, which provides real time feedback. And that, that's proven to be really helpful in tuning the truck and everything. The ECU, uh, Toyota's ECU relies on what's known as a narrow band oxygen sensor, which just provides feedback as to whether the motor's running too rich or too lean once a second. So the problem I was having was I come to a signal and the idle drops to 500 RPMs and the truck acts like it wants to die. And it was driving me crazy, but I noticed on my wideband sensor, which uh, provides real-time data, it that coincided with the air-fuel ratio going very lean, you know, up to about 16 or so. And then it would take a little while, and I'd watch the gauge, and I would see that the ECU would slowly richen things up and eventually get the truck to idle again, you know. And I thought, huh, that's that's weird, you know. Why can't the ECU quickly get back uh, to the correct air fuel ratio and then I realized oh it's probably because the standard you know the factory oxygen sensor only feeds back data once per second so it's going to take you know four five six seconds for the oxygen sensor to tell the ECU hey you're still too lean you're still too lean you're still too lean and then finally the ECU gets the you know gets the idle back under control so it's kind of kind of driving me crazy that every time uh, I would come to the signal this you know what kind of thing would tend to happen so I started thinking to myself, well, why is that happening? What is there anything I can do to keep the ECU from going way lean and you know help it get back under control more quickly so that I don't I don't have this problem? And I tried a lot of different things. What I stumbled on that actually seems to have fixed the problem, believe it or not, is just this dash pot down here. So if you're not familiar with how you know the dash pot functions or the job that it does. I can kind of demonstrate it here a little bit. It's basically a bellows. And you can see when you work the throttle plate and you release it, the dash pot's job is to allow it to come in gradually for a slow landing. And the factory, and you can see this little uh, screw here and nut, controls the length of the rod that dictates Kind of the setting for the dash pot. In the factory service manual, they give all the specifications, and I had the factory setting, uh, you know, originally, and I was having the problem. And then I started thinking to myself, well, maybe if I extend the duration of how long the dash pot takes to let the throttle plate close, that will give the ECU a helping hand. In other words, you know, gradually reduce the throttle plate uh, from open to close, maybe that will allow the ECU to kind of keep things under control a little bit better. And in fact, that seems to have worked. So what I did was I, I, I didn't use any kind of specific measurements. I just counted, you know, 1001, 1002, and you see kind of 1001, 1002. So that's, uh, you know, how I set it. And I test drove the truck and, and darn if it did not, alleviate that stumbling problem and I think what's happening when I come to a signal the factory setting gives you about one second of gradual you know kind of closing I have it set to about two seconds and that extra one second seems to help the ECU uh, and, and I don't know the exact mechanics of you know what's specifically going on is it something to do with the throttle position switch or the programming in the ECU or you know, kind of the flow characteristics from, from lean to rich or I don't, I don't know what's going on, but I do know that it seems to have cured that stumbling problem. And I think what's happening is it's, it's allowing the ECU to kind of not go off the map as much and have a little bit of extra time to get 
things back under control with regard to idling. Now I will mention the, the only other thing I've done here is the, I blocked, totally blocked off the idle air control valve hole, as I mentioned in my other video. And that seems to have really made the truck run better overall. Uh, I live in a warm climate, so I don't really need a lot of the cold start stuff. Um, I think one of the reasons is it might, that hole might produce turbulence in the airflow. So I think by blocking that off with tape, I think I might have produced a, a, a more clean airflow in there. Uh, the other thing is I do have the air suction system disabled and I have the uh, EGR system disabled. Um, and at the moment I have a test pipe in, but I'll, I'll probably put my cat back in at some point. So that's kind of the configuration of the motor. Everything else is, is more or less stock. Um, I did uh, take the PCV, the positive crankcase ventilation valve, out and drill it open just ever so slightly wider because I was trying to get better vacuum. Uh, when, the, when the truck's at idle, it's pulling around 17 and a half, 18 inches of vacuum at you know 850, 900 RPM. So I'm real happy about that. And then on deceleration, I get about 24 inches going, you know, cruising down a hill with my foot off the off the gas. So that's I, from what I've read on the forum. That's forums. That's about what the vacuum should be. So I think overall the motor's running pretty well. Uh, burns a little bit of oil, but that's because uh, I, I didn't do anything to the bottom end. Uh, you can see over here I, I've got the 3RZ that I'm working on. Uh, so in a few years, I'm going to turbocharge this and drop it in. So I'm just kind of trying to get the 22RE to, to run for a couple of years and get me around town. But truck's doing pretty well, getting about 20 miles per gallon around town and on the highway. So real pleased with that. Uh, overall, just super reliable. Um, and uh, like I say, the, the main issue I was having was coming to the coming to a stop and, and then the, the truck wants to die and, and the idle drops down to 500 RPMs for, for some unknown reason. But now that seems to have been cured by the dash pod. So I wanted to pass that along to anyone who's, who's trying to, you know, diagnose their truck or get it to run better. Uh, take another look at the dash pod and maybe make an adjustment so that instead of coming down in one second, it comes down a little bit more gradually. Two seconds seems to be uh, helping my truck quite a bit. So. Uh, that's definitely something worth checking out if you're having that kind of stumbling, uh, you know, idle dipping problem. So, okay, hope the video has been helpful. As always, if you have any questions there, uh, feel free to use the comment section below. And thanks for watching.